We are now on module one, topic one, lesson three through four. We have two pieces of paper for our homework today. The very first page is M149. So on here it says, for each example, decide whether the figures given are congruent or not congruent using translations. Show your work and explain your reasoning. Um, some of you can judge the um, congruency based on tracing them with patty paper and then overlaying them. Some of you can kind of just look at the units and the shape of it. Either one will work. Um, the thing is, the reason they're wanting you to kind of show what translation happened is to kind of show like specifically how each point moved. So let's take a look at A. So like if I'm thinking that this point here need to move to this point here, then it had to go to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then it had to go down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if that's true for the other points, then this was a translation. Because remember with translations, every single point, every single aspect had to be moved that equal amount. So I'll use some colors just so you can see it a little bit better. So like if I'm thinking this point to this point, that movement, it had to be the exact same thing as this. So it had to go to the right six and it had to go down eight. So let's see if that's what happened. So it went to the right one, two, three, four, five, six. So it went to the right six, that one's good. Let's see about down though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. So that one is wrong. So this is not congruent. And of course, the other way that you could have seen that was the fact that this side length is 1, 2, 3, 4, and this side length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's just the fact that the shape changed. It obviously can't be congruent. Same thing with B. We just need to see if all the points moved in the equal amount. It does look pretty congruent, but let's check some points. So maybe I want to check this point here to this point here. So it looks like it went to the right. And let's see by how much. One, one, two, three, four, five. It went to the right five. And then it went down. It went down one, two, three. So now if that holds true for the other points, then this is a congruent figure. So now let's do maybe this point to this point. So we need to see if it goes to the right five. One, two, three, four, five. That checks out. And down three. So it went from one, two, three. That checked out. Now, if we want to be super thorough, we check every single point. But what you can kind of do is now that you know t these two points are fine, we can kind of look at how the rest of the points are in, co um, in comparison to those points. So, like, the point um, up from blue over here is up to over 1, and same thing, it's up to over 1. So they're the same in reference to each other. And then from there, it's up 1 over 2. Same thing from this point, up 1 over 2. So that, that's another way of checking all the points. So this one is congruent. And then the last one, num or C, same thing. Let's check a couple points from here to there. And you'll notice that I'm just always going from the top one down to the bottom. You could do the same thing going from bottom to top. It's just how my brain works. So let's see how this one moved. So it went to the right, one, two. And then it went down. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now let's see if that's true for other points. Okay. So this one, let's see, went to the right. One, two, three. Oh, so that's not true. So this is not congruent. And again, some of you saw that because this one was just longer than this one. This one has a length of 
one, two, three, four, five, and this one has a length of one, two, three, four. So obviously they're not congruent. So that's M148. Let's move on to M166. We're only doing the stretch. You will want patty paper for this. Um, some of you are getting really good at your spatial abilities and are able to kind of see how things are moved without patty paper. Um, patty paper, though, is always just good to use to kind of check. If it's like, you're, I'm pretty sure it's over there, it can just help you see, visually see where it's supposed to end up. So that can be a quick way to check it. So number one says, reflect the quadrilateral across line y equals negative two. So that's that's this line down here. So I know that we've been using the axes, but this time we're using this y equals negative two. So we're going to trace our shape. And then I'm also going to trace the line, and then that will help me make sure I have it on the right plane vertically, but to make sure I have it on the right plane, um, left and right, I'm going to give myself a little crosshair from the axis. So now when I flip it over, it's really easy to line those up. So I'm lining up the y equals negative 2 line, the axis line, and that just helps me with that. And so we can kind of see where it ends up when it's flipped over. These ones sometimes are hard for people because it ends up on top of itself and we don't like that. So however you want to, you just get that image off the patty paper. So we have it, but it's, it's not super um, thick yet. And we also might just want to make sure every point's exactly where it is. Like I can see down here, the corner's gonna end up at a whole number, so I definitely know that that's a point. You can kinda just see where the points are. Like this one was one away, so this one has to be one away. And some of you, that might've been how you did it by hand instead of using the patty paper. So we can just kind of make this look a little bit nicer. And then this one's completely done. So it's, it's just flipped over that spot. We'll do the same thing with number two. This time, flipping it across x equals negative 3. So we'll be going across this way. So I will trace my shape. And when you're tracing your shape, if you're using the method where you like shade on the other side, you'll want to make sure you're tracing your shape nice and thick. That way, when you trace it later, it's going to come out really nice. Okay. Add in my reflection line, and I'll give myself a little point of reference. So here's Here's the x-axis there just to help me know how to line this up. Flip it over. So I have it lined up with x equals negative 3, but I need to line it up with the axes as well. So I'm just going to color over this in order to get the graphite to come down. And that will give me my image of exactly where it needs to end up. And then I just need to trace over it to make it look nice and pretty. And then we are all done.